Hi everyone, and welcome to the NG Podcast. I'm Marcus Einson, your host. In the NG Podcast, we hope to bring you content that's of interest to anyone involved in enteral feeding, whether you're a healthcare professional, a patient, or a carer. We hope you enjoy this episode, and if you do, please subscribe or like on whichever platform you're either viewing or listening to this on. Hi everyone, this week's episode is part of the NG Podcast partnership with Pint to support their Talk About Hand campaign by talking to people who use artificial nutrition. This week I'm joined by Don Colley, a Pint member who uses enteral nutrition via a gastrostomy to meet his nutrition and hydration needs. Don has been treated for GI problems since he was 14, and for him that means prior to the NHS existing, um, as he is 90 years old. Uh, despite this, he's had a very varied life, some of which I'm pretty jealous of, especially his motorcycle racing, his scuba diving, and he even dived off the Mary Rose, uh, for which he received a certificate from Prince Charles. Um, and Don has always been a problem solver and continues this in relation to his enteral feeding as he designs and 3D prints tools and devices to help him overcome the issues he comes across in using his feeding system. But we're going to talk about more about that uh, in detail later. Uh, Don, welcome to the NG podcast. We're delighted you could join us. Um, I'm glad I can help. Um, it's a difficult subject for people who haven't experienced it. And uh, although I don't have many problems, I've only had a couple of serious ones. Um, not pump packing up and uh, tube getting blocked, but uh, apart from that, I've been reasonably well. Uh, one of the advantages, of course, is that I can maintain a constant weight at whatever weight I wish to be. Mm. The only advantage, I think. <laughs> Yes, which which is probably probably <laughs> definitely advantage of for the rest of us, um, especially while we've been in lockdown. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly trying to shift some, um, but I'm I'm not very good at it. Um, what what I'd like to do, Don, is is start with some of the parts of of your journey using enteral feeding, and um, I mentioned in the introduction that your first encounter with the health healthcare system was uh, when you were 14 in 1944, uh, four years before the NHS existed. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your initial treatments uh, and how these affected you? Yeah, so I finished up, I call pneumonia, I finished in hospital and um, they found by doing an endoscopy uh, with a very crude method they used in those days, succeeded in breaking one of my teeth. But, um, that, that, the diagnosis was that it was, the pneumonia was caused by the fact that I had a subgenial spasm, as it was called in those days. And um, they decided that the best way was to try and, and help the muscle at the bottom end of the esophagus to work better. And they uh, um, supplied me with a, a rubber tube, which was filled with mercury of all things, um, which I had to swallow. Um, this tube, my mother used to, or she used to put it in boiling water to, to sanitize it. And then I had to dip it in liquid paraffin and swallow it. Uh, it was as sick as that finger. Um, and it wasn't very pleasant at all. And I had to do that every morning before I went to school. Um, it worked, I suppose, but. Um, I can't remember how long it went on for, but eventually I gave up because I managed to eat enough to keep me going. I was quite oh. lightweight, but um, it didn't really it didn't really affect me. As I, mm. um, the only thing yeah. that it did 
And the only thing it did do was to, it kept me out of the army oh, as there was, there was conscription in those days. Mm -hmm. And I played past grade four, which meant that uh, I was unable to join Her Majesty's forces. All yeah, right, right. Whether that was Having... good or bad. Yeah, I mean, you, you sort of you sort of said um, you, you eventually gave up swallowing the mercury-filled rubber tubes um, because um, you managed to keep your weight up. I guess having to do that sort of thing encourages you to try and eat. <laughs> yes, it certainly was. Um, but uh, I didn't do any more about the uh, treatment, uh, and uh, it was quite a, a while later that uh, it got worse and I had to take to other treatment. Mm -hmm. This was... But, so, so, so you managed to be able to eat enough for yeah, a number yeah. of years to yeah. keep keep your weight okay. And um, you, you you did a lot of adventurous things, like, like you said, the, the, um, the motorbike racing and scuba diving. Were, were there any ever any times when um, that was affected by your um, difficulty in eating? Surprisingly, no. Um, I thought I might not get through the medical for the scuba diving, which is quite strict, mm -hmm. but um, it never really affected me at all. Uh, I thought hanging upside down in water would probably be the worst thing you should do. But yeah. no, it, um, it didn't. Um, it, if it had have done, it would have been pretty fatal, I would think. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I did that for many years, um, mainly in England. I never dived abroad, but yeah. England is just as good to dive as anywhere, especially with all the wrecks. Yeah, yeah, and and you you sort we'd mentioned that you dived on the Mary Rose. Um, wh wh when was that? How long ago was that? You did you did those dives? Ooh. Quite quite a while now. I can't remember the date. Um, to a date, no, they were they were asking for various diving clubs for volunteers to go down and and dig the silt out from around the, the various bits on the boat. And eventually it was raised and is now in, in Portsmouth. Um, mm. And uh, I've been to see it and I could see where I actually was digging the, <laughs> digging the dirt. As it, uh, yeah. Um, very interesting, very interesting. That's, yeah. That's very cool. And great to have been able to contribute to, you know, a project like getting that um, yeah, yeah. back back up. I still get backups from what, um, emails from the Mary Rose Trust. They're not yeah. inviting me to their doors, but uh, you don't do that when you can't. Leave. There's no point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and, and and eventually, after a number of years of being able to um, uh, manage, you, you, your, your problems got worse and you had to move on to enteral nutrition. Um, how, how long have you been using enteral nutrition now, Dom? Um, I've been using it for three and a half years, something like that. Um, but prior to that, I, did, I had all the treatments that were available. Um, I had a... a a serious one in, uh, in Barts where they um, tried to correct them. They, um, my, there was no open heart then. Um, they went in through my back and took a suction of rib out and tried to, well, they did, they cut the, the muscle that controls the bottom end of the esophagus. Uh, it was okay for a short time, but. Uh, it came back again. Mm, mm. So, so, so you've had to learn to live with enteral nutrition, coming to it, if you don't mind me saying so, at, at quite an elderly age. Um, 
Um, so how do you organize your your feeding regime uh, and managing it so that it works with your life? Um, organize is the operative word there. Um, I personally, I feed overnight, which means that I've got <clears throat> the whole of the day free. Um, mm. But you, I have to organize because you have to be organized. I got everything ready um, around at the time. My wife's having her evening meal, so that keeps me out of the way. Mm. Um, I got all the stuff lined up, make sure everything's working. And then um, I go on my feed about half past 10 and I set the feed rate so it wakes me up or wait till it wake me up, wakes my wife up about um, um, seven o'clock, something like that, or a bit earlier. And um, it doesn't wake me because one of the disadvantages is that the pump alarm, I can't hear it. I wear hearing aids and she has to wake me up to tell me it's finished and go through the procedure of cleaning yeah. it. And cleaning. Yeah. I bet, I bet that makes you popular. <laughs> no, she's an early riser anyway. Is she? she Just she, as well. She... <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I, I'd, be, I'd be in terrible trouble with my wife, who's not an early riser. No. No, um, that's the only disadvantage. Um, well, not a disadvantage, actually. It works pretty well. Mm. Mm. And um, when we spoke previously, um, you mentioned that you don't think anything can prepare for someone to only be having their food and hydration artificially, you know, and obviously it's only three and a half years, so it's still quite fresh in your mind. Um, what were the most significant issues for you at the beginning? Um, and is there anything you still find difficult or miss even now? The first, the first thing was the fact that I couldn't taste anything. I, I, it's the sense of being uh, having something in your mouth that tastes pleasant and you enjoy it. Um, and the fact that um, the constant... Um, television adverts for food, mm. um, all the kind of things I like and the cooking programs, which my wife liked. Um, a lot of pressure there. You, yeah. It gets you down. But, so you can't do these things. Mm. It's mm. slowly getting better. Um, but uh, it's still the feeling there that I'd really like to eat a nice steak or something like that. Or yeah. just taste it. It's, um, um, it's a problem over Christmas as well when you can't <clears throat> uh, when you can't go and sit down at a, um, a Christmas meal with the family. It's um, yeah, it's not not good. But no. you get over it. You well, you have to. Nothing else yeah. you can do. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I guess talking, I've spoken to a number of people who are uh, artificially fed, and I think that's one of the things that is, is really quite common that, you know, a lot of our um, celebrations are, are centered around food and, and drink, and, and people have to, you know, struggle with that. No, it's, um... You, I mean, even at Easter, <laughs> you can't have an Easter egg. <laughs> no. Um, mind you, I do cheat occasionally. I do have a um, peppermint sweet or something like that just to uh -huh. clean my mouth. Um, but um, it doesn't really seem to have a lot of um, effect, luckily. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just, just the taste of things. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I think pretty early in your journey, um, 
you, you came into contact with Pang. How did you how did you initially um, find out about Pint and, and how did you get involved? Well, I finally my my um, surgeon that I saw was, had been seen for about 16 years um, said there's nothing more I actually can do. We, we, everything, you know, you've got to a stage where you can't even get um, soft food down or even um, these uh, drinks that are, they're in a blender. I tried that. I tried. They got smaller and smaller and smaller um, density, and it still wasn't. I was still losing weight, and he said, yeah. "I'm afraid the only thing you can do now is to have a, a tube fitted and pee through a tube." And so, um, by, I finally, after my childhood, <laughs> agreed to. That it, I'd better do that, otherwise it was yeah. not going to be very good. Um, so I went on the web and, and looked at um, feeding up. And uh, one of the things on there was um, pimp, uh, pimp came up. So yeah. um, on their side, they gave a, um, a local or fairly local meeting that they, they had. And uh, lucky for me, well, uh, not lucky for me, but it was lucky that I went to this meeting because it was actually the last one because the person who ran it um, stopped doing it. Um, but that meeting really changed things because I was able to speak to people who got uh, the feeding and there was a nurse there that could explain it all. There were people there that actually got it, got the tune. Um, so I was quite well prepared um, to then to have the operation. I actually knew more or less um, mm -hmm. what was what was going to happen and how it worked. Um, it, was, it was at that meeting. Um, I was speaking to one of the um, chaps that was there, and he said he always fed overnight because that that one he left his um, the, the whole of the day free. And mm -hmm. I thought that's a good idea. Um, I'll, I'll try and go with that when I when I actually get. Yeah. The, the, the unfortunate part was that because. They can't get a uh, 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 camera down and haven't been able to do it for years. Mind you, everybody who tries, oh, no, I'll do it. I'll be able to, but nobody has. Um, but, um, so I had to have it under a local anesthetic. I think that was the, wasn't that bad. I've had worse, but uh, yeah. it would have been better if it had been that, that the easy way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But mind you, I haven't been able to have an anaesthetic for many years. From that. Yeah. Um, apart from one night where I had a heart bypass and I mm. couldn't do that under. You can't do that without <laughs> it, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, no, so, so, no, if I hadn't gone to that meeting, it would have been, I think it would have been a lot different. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I've over the last couple of years come to really understand, you know, the, the difference pint can make to uh, people. And I think, um, as well as, you know, going to meetings and, and getting information, you also get involved in, in helping other people who are just starting on uh, enteral feeding, um, can you tell us about what 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 you what you do uh, when that um, when that opportunity comes up? Well, um, actually, um, the only time I've been able to help is you know, on Facebook, you know, on the inside on Facebook. Um, 
Caroline, if it's Caroline, has asked me on a couple of occasions if I would speak to people. Uh, I've always agreed, but as yet, nobody has been in contact. I've got my contact, all my contacts. So if they want to, I'm quite happy to help anybody um, yeah. uh, who anticipating having a uh, tune. Uh, I, might find I would fly on my particular type of yeah. tune. Um, there's so many different ones that um, uh, I've lost uh, count of how many yeah, different yeah. ones there are. But uh, I'm, yeah. I'm but, quite but, happy with it. Uh, and I think that's one of the great things about Pint. There, there are so many members uh, who who are willing to um, help others and make you know and try and make their uh, starting entral feed or, or um, uh, parental feed that bit easier by by sharing experiences. And I think I think that's a great thing about Pint as an organisation. Um, Another thing you mentioned when you was when you had to go into hospital, you you had a hemorrhage in your esophagus, and you were surprised that some of the staff didn't know anything about enteral feeding. You know what happened in in that situation, and did the did the lack of understanding from some people affect your treatment at all, or or just how smoothly it went? Uh, it didn't actually affect my treatment. It just um, made me wonder how it's missed in their training. Um, I know they were quite horrified on the, the line that they put in, which I, I, they wanted to put it in, but I refused um, because I wanted to stay with this because it, with my um, arrangement because it enables me to be completely independent. Mm -hmm. um, which, which I don't like to be reliant on anybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Apart from my wife, I have to be on. But uh, that's we've been married so long now that it's, it's not a case of reliance. It's mutual help. Um, yeah. She has things that I have to help her with. She helps me. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, and and uh, how many years have you been married now, Don? Um, 66 this year. So, sorry, I put you on the spot. If you'd got that wrong, you'd, you'd, <laughs> you'd be in trouble later. No, it was, uh, it was uh, 65th last year. So yeah, yeah. 66 this year. Yeah, I think my maths are right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fabulous. Um, so um, we mentioned at the beginning um, that you design and print uh, your 3D print equipment to help you with your enteral feeding, uh, which which I was fascinated with because uh, I think I'm I'm reasonably good with technology, but I have no idea how uh, how to use a 3D printer. Nor would I even try. So, um, uh, what what sort of what triggered you starting? Uh, starting to to make things to, to to help you handle your feeding system. Oh, this is a case that I all the th things I had been doing, uh, like wood turning and, and wood carving, came to a point where um, my hands wouldn't do what my brain was telling me to do, and I, if I was doing any turning, um, eventually I'd have to unhook my hand from the chisel because I just couldn't release it. And the same yeah. with the carving. Um, so I had to have something to do. Um, but when 3D printing came more fashionable or more available, shall we say, um, I decided to get a 3D printer. Uh, it's a, made by a British firm. But, um, and they have always been very helpful with um, getting me on track if things go wrong. But um, that means that I can make things, uh, I think of something, 
I can draw it, do the measurements, and, and print it. Now, where, um, if I was wanted to make it from scratch, from metal or wood, that would take a long while. Mm -hmm. And as I, as I found out, that um, you find that once you've done it, you can improve it, or it doesn't work, and you spend days or weeks doing it, but with a yeah. printer, you can find out within hours whether it's going to work, scrap it and improve it. Um, so it does work eventually. It doesn't always. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think um, I think it's amazing you're doing that. Um, can you talk us through a, a couple of pieces? I know you've got one that you describe as your, your Swiss Army knife gadget because it does more than one thing. I happen to have one I made before. Um, yeah, that's my Swiss Army knife. Um, not doesn't look a lot, but it does everything I want to do when I'm setting up for the, the evening. I can do, demonstrate, and if you like, I've got the things. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is my thing, right? Yeah. This piece looks like a coffin. Yeah. It's on the top there. And snaps off the seal. Okay. Right. Was it, was, is, that, is, is that is that because you can't just do it with just your yeah, fingers? Yeah. So once, once that's done, the other two parts, that slides onto a slot there. Yeah. This slides Can you are you getting what I'm doing? We can just about yeah, we can see that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that goes on to there. Slides up. That goes. That goes into the top. Yeah. Now open, and that cuts off. Um, and I just use two fingers on there, and with the other hand push that down. It that is. Yeah. That that is really ingenious. I've 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 never seen something like that before it's brilliant brilliant um because yeah because these things are made to be really secure sometimes they can they make it really hard if you don't yeah. have yeah. the dexterity yeah. and the strength so it's quite, that's brilliant yeah it's quite painful to do it without i can well, I don't, mind you i haven't done it for a long while but i was finding it was very painful on my fingers to try and do it um mm -hmm. to put that there. Yeah, and, and and I think you also mentioned that you um, printed a stand as well. So actually, that's the stand. Yeah. Um, that obviously adjusts the height. So the, but the that falls on top there. Yeah. The bag. Hangs on there. Yeah. And it just stands on, on the tray that collects any drips of mine. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, I, and I think. The case where one of the bags split and luckily it was on the tray on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think you said you made that because the ones that you were supplied with were, were a bit too heavy and that one's much lighter. Yeah. This one weighs 300 grams. Obviously, yeah. Lighter feather, but the um, one supplied weighs just over a couple of kilos. Mm -hmm. and that's about my limit to lift it without putting all the other dinner on it as well. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, you, can you imagine the, the weight of that of the, of the um, pump and the waste? That's that one's about three times the weight of that. Yeah. Um, well, probably more. Um, 
along with a, a couple of kilos of, of heavy steel stand, um, which is enormous, um, is not very helpful when you have to go out of the bed in the night and troll off to the toilet. Um, yeah. that, that I can hold complete with all the fittings. I can hold it quite comfortably. I have a feeling that um, if if some of the people that make the uh, the accessories that go with um, um, entral feeding see this video, you might you might get some calls um, <laughs> because you know if, if you could just make sure you get plenty of commission. <laughs> Actually, I've just started an improved version. I've only done the bases yet. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so this, these uh, just printed ends or the yeah. two blunts of aluminium and the base. It's, it's more stable than that one. Uh, as I'm, as both my wife and I are getting a, a little um, less able, um, you don't want to knock it over. Not only yeah, yeah. Would, would it do? damage to the equipment, it might well do damage to me, which I'm more, yes. more worried about. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I think you're slowly becoming the James Dyson of entral feeding, Don. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and, and, and I think you've also, um, you, you've done a pint logo as well. Um, we, yeah. We, I think we were looking at. I was trying to... to um, yeah, I've printed a, it's, is that back to front you? No, no, it's right, it's right now. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get the effect of the paint being going down a tube, but I didn't quite manage it. I'm not at all happy. I'll, I'll carry on and try and do yes. something better. It's, well, we're... We'll look forward to seeing the, the final version. <laughs> yeah, it might be quite a while. I'll try. But, um, yeah, it, it's fascinating to do because you not only have you got to um, think of the, of the design, then you've got to work out what filament is best to print it in. Um, yeah. what direction the printing goes because it's stronger in certain directions than the others. So, um, yeah, it keeps well, your brain open, and that's the main Yeah, thing. Keep, keeping you out of mischief, I think <laughs> you would say, where <laughs> I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, all the more reason to keep doing it. Um, listen, Don, I, I could speak to you all day about your life and your experiences and, and how you're enabling yourself to manage uh, entral feeding. Um, I'm sure what we've talked about today will have inspired uh, many people uh, and also perhaps uh, reminded healthcare professionals that um, um, it, it, the, the real experts in managing treatments like entral feeding are often the people who have to live with them day to day and it's really important to make sure that uh, w whatever is planned for someone uh, fits it, it, it can, is adapted as much as possible to, um, uh, to, to what they want to achieve in their life and how they want to live. Um, thank you so much for coming on the NG podcast. It really has been a pleasure. Uh, and I hope to speak to you again soon. It's been a pleasure for me as well. I've really enjoyed it. Um, Excellent. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, um, my speech hasn't been up to standard this morning. I'm, uh, I don't know what's happened, but I'm getting under the cough. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. And um, you, you, your speech is probably clearer than mine because of my um, quite strong northern accent. So, uh, no, listen, Don, I hope to speak to you soon. Thank you again. And, um, yes, uh, speak soon. Thank you.